this is State of Mind. If you like what you see, hit the little button right here. There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> and, uh, and subscribe because, you know, we need that. Uh, today I have uh, someone who I dig her. I don't know. I, and I don't know her that well, but I dig her. She's uh, not just an, an actress and a, she's, like a, she's like the whole thing. She's a dancer, a gymnast, I think ballet. Mm -hmm. Wow, and all <laughs> kinds of stuff, and a gamer, right, or something. You were, okay? We'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, and she is Chad Duel, <laughs> fiance, who who Chad plays my son. We'll get into Chad a little later too, <laughs> but I do love Chad a lot. He's like he's really like a son to me, a son that I always mess with. And I'll, I'll ask. I'll get into that later. So, how you doing, Courtney? I'm good. You, you I'm cool? Good. You're happy to be here? I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. I was honored when you asked me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born in Michigan, but I moved when I was like 18 months. So, I just Texas, I say, is where I'm from. But I grew up in Dallas, Texas, Plano, and then I moved. Plano. Up. Plano. Plain old Texas is what uh. I used to say. <laughs> yeah. But in Plano, Texas. And um, yeah, I moved out here when I was like 14. I came back and forth for a year or two. and then How did you move out here when you were 14? Well, I was very thankful. My parents, I knew that like I always wanted to be an actress. Yeah. It's kind of something I just, I just knew. I knew I wanted to dance and act. And I was in acting classes and then my parents tried to get me an agent and I, I was just a lot, I was, had a lot of energy. And my mom was like, we're gonna wait until your, your 12th birthday. So on my 12th birthday, I blew out my candles and they said, what'd you wish for? I said, I want an agent. Really? <laughs> yeah. So they got me an agent and then I went through six weeks of high school and I was like, I don't wanna be here. I'm not, I always thankful, did really well in school. I just hated the drama. I wasn't into the click stuff, I just, I wanted to go live my life and do my do a job that I loved, and so um, yeah, they had me come out here. And you started college at sixteen. I mean, on my sixteenth birthday. So you're hella smart. You can admit I, it. Yeah. You're, you're, damn, how do you I start can, college at sixteen? I just I it was it was a wild experience because you have to take a test and pass all these yeah so i i passed i did my 11th and 12th grade in six months i went back and forth like through fax back during fax machine days um, <laughs> through school and then yeah i just graduated early and then i tested in and so some of my classes because i didn't have that in 11th and 12th grade when i was in college i had to do like the prerequisites but yeah. then some of them i just went straight into the into the classes and then I got my associates when I was 19 and then I just have been working. So you 16 and you finished college or how'd that work? I, I got to my associates degree and then I went I'm literally like maybe 11 or 12 credits away if not a little bit more from my degree but I knew I wasn't going to use my degree you know so yeah. at a certain point it was like I went into psychology because I love human condition. I love human behavior. I'm obsessed with it. What do you it. love about it? I just am fascinated by human beings. I, I think. I, am, I love human beings. I love Do you it. watch Dateline and all that stuff? Or? I do. I love all of that. I mean, my favorite is like, I've watched every serial killer documentary. Me anything. too. I just am like, I'm so fascinated with the way that, you know, human beings work, how they behave, how they're conditioned, nature versus nurture. Like, is it that is, are you just that way or yes. were you born that? I just am fascinated. I think that's also why I love acting because I love being a vessel to explore all these different human conditions and then not only learn more about myself, but learn more about the people around me. And then if I have the opportunity to, to make people feel less alone, if I'm going through something yes. that's really something that they need to like get through, I'm like, I will go through it with you. Yeah. Is kind of the way that I've always seen it. Now, how about Chad? How's he when, uh, you know, does he open up? He seems like a little bit closed off. He has opened up more and more since He's, we've dated. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, I, I'm... But you're good for him. That yeah, way. Yeah, in that way, for sure. Yeah, and he's good for me in other ways. Like, I get very stressed out sometimes, and he's very, oh, you know, he's, 
So we're good. We're good balance. Yeah, because, you know, one thing I have to say, well, it's in my book, but uh, I won't get into it, into it. But I treated Chad really bad when he came to GH. And it wasn't him at all. Mm -hmm. It was my own, my own stuff that I've, I believe I've worked through and I've gotten much better. Uh, but I, but he had to take the brunt of it, and I, I don't feel good about it, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the the great thing I love about Chad is, and I admire this about Chad. You can say anything to him, and he doesn't hurt his feelings, or maybe it does, and he comes home to you and says, "Maurice is a jerk." <laughs> No, he, but but he, right. he doesn't get. I mean, I'll say stuff at work, and and I love that because he doesn't get defensive. Yeah, it's almost like it it's just, a great quality. It's a great quality. It's a great quality. Yeah. I wish I was like that, I and know. I, I, I kind of work on that. But it's amazing how. Uh, but there's other things about Chad that you know, he became like a son to me. He lived with me for three weeks. I know he told me. <laughs> No, he loves you too. He definitely sees you as like a second dad. He I am a father to yeah. all these guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else I want to talk to you about? So, you got into the acting, and I have to say this because uh, I, I was interested in you for something that I was doing, and I looked up some stuff that you've done, and I really went, "Damn, this! You're like this real confident." when you're working, when you're acting, which is a great quality. And uh, I was really, I was kind of hurt that I didn't get to work with you, but we'll-, we'll Why not? <laughs> I, I mean, but know. you've done every soap except GH, right? I didn't do days. I was oh. up for days twice. And the day actually I was supposed to screen test for it, chemistry read for it, Bold and Beautiful came back. And they were like, oh, we have something else. And so I made a choice. I was going to go to one or the other, and I oh. chose to stay because I love the character that I play. I felt like I wasn't finished with her yet. And it's the same character you had before? Or? It's the same character I now have on Young and the Restless. It's the same one. Oh, really? Yeah. They, I got moved to recurring because they were switching a bunch of characters around on Bold. And I was like, okay. And, and then like two months later, not even, almost two months later, they called me from Young and the Restless and said, hey, we want to write your character in from Bold. Is that cool? And I was like, yeah. That is cool. <laughs> I'm like, hell yeah, that's cool. So. Um, <laughs> so I have a state of mind. It's called Breaking the Chain. And you work for an organization, right? Breaking the Chain. Called Breaking the Chain. Yeah. See that? Synchronicity. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Um, my Breaking the Chain is about about men, well, it's about anybody that doesn't cry and how unfortunate that is that, we're, you know, you're either brought up that way or it's, it's just not in you to cry and you think it's a weak thing or especially men. Yeah. Especially men who are uh, from a, a certain culture, right? Yeah. Like, like I am, uh, Hispanic. You're taught to, you, you got to be strong, you got to be this, you got to be that. Um, what's your organization? Tell me about the... You... Um, it's actually interesting that you were just saying that because my aunt just passed away. And my, two days ago, two days ago? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right. and my dad, we were just talking about this because my dad's one of those guys that he's very, like, oh, has yeah, it all yeah. together. And my brother passed away when I was 12, my older brother. And my dad didn't cry. Wait a minute. What'd your, what'd your brother pass away from? So my brother fell off of a cliff when he was, when he was probably around I, 25, 26. He was stargazing and he fell and broke every bone in his body. And um, he had addiction problems when he was younger. And so when he had this accident, they put him on painkillers and he got addicted to painkillers. And then... Just eventually, they don't know if it was that or he relapsed with something else, but they found him and he was 29. And it was it was really hard for our, our family. And our family's had a lot of loss in it. And it's like, you know, our whole family, we were talking the other night about, you know, our relationship with, with death. But my dad, his little sister passed away. And 
my brother was there with him and my dad broke down crying and oh shoot and he doesn't cry and he doesn't and it was like a lot you know and my brother and him and I told my brother I said I think it was important that it was my brother that was there because my dad when my brother pa my younger my older brother passed away my dad felt like he had to be this pillar of strength for all of us and my mom would say honey it's okay to feel that way and he would just know I have to be strong for my kids. And the same when his mom passed away, he felt like he had to be strong for his sisters. But in this moment, I hadn't gotten up there yet. My mom was leaving a doctor's appointment, so it was just him and my brother, two men. My younger brother's 25, two men. And, I, and, he, and all night he talked about how cathartic it was because he hadn't had that release in so many ways. And you're right, it's so important. And it's, Now his father probably didn't cry either right probably it not. just goes yeah. from generation to generation yeah and that's why the chain has to be broken yeah because um, it is it is cathartic and it's essential to our human need you know empathy is like it's so important in this lifetime and when you pinch yourself off from that you're not even honoring yourself and honoring who you are and and, and your own healing and your own growth because you're only allowing yourself and I know some people say, oh, I don't want to feel that way. You know, Chad doesn't cry very often. I think I've seen Chad cry twice right, ever yeah. in the five years we've dated. And and the last time was, you know, he hid in the bathroom. And he came out afterwards and I saw his eyes were red. And I just put my arms around him and just held him, you know. He didn't cry, but I'm like, I don't, just releasing it is, is important. Very important. Yeah, you know, I told you the story with, with Joshua where, uh, you know, just eight months ago, nine months ago, I was crying, and and then uh, even even in the state that I was in, there's still a part of me that didn't want to cry in front of him. Yeah. And my thoughts were, do it for him. I just. I That's had, wonderful. you know, I was like, don't be selfish. Don't cry, do it for him. Yeah. And it's important. I, you know, you, I've broken that chain. Mm -hmm. There's some chains I haven't broken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we're all trying that. You know, it's too <laughs> yeah. difficult, you know. Yeah. And, and it, it's funny with me that the chains that I haven't broken seem like the easiest. Um, but I'm still working on that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so this organization... What does it involve? What? So it's an eating disorder foundation. It's about eating disorder. Uh, did you have eating disorder? I did, yeah. How is that? Well, I'm better. I'm, I'm healed from it, you know. Um, it, it was really, it kind of came on, and it took me a minute to realize what it, what it was. Um, I grew up as a dancer, and I've said before that I'm a big people pleaser, and that's my chain that I'm currently breaking and feel like I'm succeeding at, but it's, you know, it's deep rooted. And, um, I was so athletic and I was so in shape and I did a movie in Bulgaria and I got a parasite and I got really sick on set and had to keep filming. And when I got home, I didn't know at the time I had a parasite. I thought I just got food poisoning and it slowly started to get worse and worse and worse where I mean, I couldn't eat literally anything. And I started to get really, really thin. And, um, but I was still working out, so I still had my muscle. So everyone was complimenting me and complimenting ah. how great I looked. And, and, you know, I was only 19. So at the time, I'm like, okay. You know, and I, art, I had anxiety. I was on anxiety medication. There was a lot of stuff that I felt like I couldn't control. And that was one thing I was like, well, at least I can look good. And so what ended up happening was it was like I was anorexic and then very, very, for a brief amount of time, a few weeks, I was like, I was bulimic. And it was one night I remember my mom made dinner. What's the difference? Anorexic's where you don't eat. Bulimia is where you we make throw yourself up. throw up. Oh, yeah. And I had gotten to that point where it was like I either ate a lot and then, well, so my mom had made dinner was what I was going to say. And I remember afterwards I went in and I got sick and I remember thinking, I'm like, what am I doing? what am I doing? Like I'm a pillar of loving health and wellness and this is not that. And so immediately I was like, I'm not going to do that. So then I just dove more into my fitness. So I would eat and then I go, okay, this many calories. So I have to burn this many calories. And it wasn't until 
probably about three months later, I went to the doctor and they did an endoscopy and I had multiplied H. pylori. I had multiple um, parasites in my stomach. And once they healed that, then I could start to heal my mentality and go, you know what? Like I, I broke my body down is what I did. I had so many injuries just from over exercising that it was like, that's where I just made a mission to myself that I was like, I'm, I am bound and determined to be healthy and whatever that means for me, you know, it's not like a universal, this is what healthy is, healthy state of mind, healthy body. It's, it's what it, it, it works for you doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody yeah. else. And so this organization, I, they reached out to me a few years ago and I just was like, it's, they're amazing. And, um, Deborah Hopkins is the one that, you know, founded it all. And, um, everyone's just wonderful. And so we've partnered with a bunch of eating disorder, um, you know, uh, uh, people that are in the community. And now we are expanding it into the whole mental health and mental wellness area wow. because it is a mental illness. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. so it's, um, we're actually doing a talk tomorrow uh, about, there's three of us, um, one's a therapist and then there's me and this other girl who, um, She's wonderful. She's this organization called Sadi Baddies, which is about eating disorders and body image and mental health in the African American communities. Beautiful. Yeah. So we're we're um, anyway. I I, no, I love it, and and it's something that I think is so important because especially now with social media, body image is so yeah, crucial yeah. to talk about because you see these people. You have apps that are making yeah, people yeah, skinny, yeah. or people just in yeah, their bikinis, oh, yeah, and yeah. it's. It's, you know, it's all healthy. over the place. No, yeah. no, no. I mean, I remember the only thing I know about uh, what you're talking about is Karen Carpenter. Yeah. And I loved Karen Carpenter. When I listen to her, her voice, it's just like angels, right? And this was back, what, how old am I? 40 years ago, whatever. She died. And it was sad, but that back then nobody really knew. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's people are more aware now, right? A little more. Knowledge. I think they're more aware of it, and I think they're more capable of talking about it. I think that's with all mental health. I think for a while people just didn't want to talk about it. Even when I was 19, and I went and got on anxiety. I actually got on anxiety medicine when I was like. Would you 17. get on? I was originally on Zoloft, and then I ended up on Cymbalta. Ah. So I was on Cymbalta from when I was 17 till I was 23. Wow. Yeah. Because I was having panic attacks like nobody's business. It was like I couldn't, a lot of times couldn't function. And I, it was really affecting me. And when I was 23 though, I was like, you know what? I felt like a lot of it was, I wanted to tackle it on my own. I know, know, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. And, but sometimes... You need that. You no, know? no, I get it. Yeah, and and so you, you yeah, you, yeah. The, what I what I what I say is, I didn't ever, I never, you know, I've been taking lithium for thirty years because I'm bipolar, and I was, you know, the whole story. And, yeah. But um, I've had three nervous breakdowns, and one was major. And lithium's been fantastic, and I'm good with it. But I never wanted to take anything for for uh, anxiety. Yeah. And this last one. The one I told you about. If you're that bad, yeah, get help. Absolutely, I, I mean, completely agree. But you know, I've gone through the anxiety where I'm on a pl- you know, we're playing and it comes and you it goes away and then, or you know, you 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 have anxiety for a day, maybe maybe an hour, maybe two hours, and it goes away. But if it stays with you for months, yeah, you need to. Get, I should have gotten something. help two months into the gig, right? Uh, yeah. So I. I uh, so I believe in all that, but I do. I'm. I would go off it right now, slowly, but I'm, I'm doing something in uh, May, uh, a job, and I need. I don't yeah. want to. But after that, I'm going off. Yeah. Like exactly what you said. Yeah. Whatever makes you feel the most confident and supported. And I feel like at that point in my life, it was like you know what? I'd been on it for six years. I, I couldn't even remember what a panic attack felt like. It was like that's you know. Wow. And then what happened was I kept forgetting to take my medicine. Oh, you did. <laughs> You're not supposed those, to. No. And and what happened? I started getting these things called brain zaps, and it was yes. Like, yeah, it was weird. I was like, and so I went to my doctor just to say I'm getting off of it, and. Basically, he called me delusional, um, and I said, "I just came to you to let you know 
just so I was under doctor's care, but I'm doing this, you know? And he said, okay, well, here's another prescription. I said, no, I'm doing this. And I did the wrong thing, and I don't advise this to anyone. I went cold turkey. Ooh, you're not supposed to do no, that. No, you're not it's supposed bad, to. It's really bad for you, especially because of the way that... Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, I, your brain fires, and I was definitely getting brain zapped. Sometimes I'd turn my head, and it was like... And so then I started having panic, because I was like, what if this doesn't go away? Mm. And then I talked to a doctor, and they were like, well, you shouldn't have gone off of it so then we, i went back on a weaning yeah schedule yeah, and that's what I then i was fine but um but yeah i still have you know anxiety and but i have been in therapy i talk to a therapist every week i have you for three do? years yeah because i'm you like you are healthy as hell man. i think it's important it is important it's so important i don't although <laughs> i just talked to a psychiatrist but he but i should be in therapy also the problem is that i that i have and i've said it before is when I'm good, I, I just think I'm good. Yeah. But, you know, I need to get to the deep root yeah. of it to really figure out why it doesn't go away. This is, I know what triggers it. It's stress. Yeah. You get enough stress, it starts, you start, and then you, and, and you almost can't, once it go, you go over the line, you can't get back. Absolutely. That's why I think therapy for me, like, I've been in it for, I, you know, there have been weeks where, this was probably like a year ago. I remember calling my therapist. It was like right before. And I'm like, what am I going to talk about? Because everything was great. I'm like, what am I going to talk right, about? Right. But then as we started talking, it was like, honestly, just talking about all the wonderful things in my life was something that I needed to hear back. So it was almost like, even though things are great, I needed to have that confirmation. And, and I talked to her about it. I said, it was weird. I thought maybe I'll cancel. I, there's nothing ba bad to talk about. And she's yeah. like, but that's not what this is about. And so what I realized with those triggers, for me, I started to realize my brain moves really fast. I move really quick in life. And it's like everything's great and one thing happens and my brain's like, mm. you know, one week I could be in the next week, you know, it's a completely different state of mind. It's a completely yeah. different space. And, but I realized the more I went, I started to notice those patterns and I could more quickly yes. before I cross that's that line right. go. That's right. This I see what's happening. Let's that's what it is. It. I talk about it like it's uh, car gears. Yeah. You got to stay in first, second gear. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to third, but if you go to third, you'll be all right. If you go to fourth, you're in trouble. If you go to fifth, you're bad, like I was yeah. in fifth. So you want to stay in first and second, and you just got to figure out and see it before it's there so you don't go to third or fourth. And a lot of times we don't see it, and that's where the problem lies. Yeah, because it's a big jump to go from fifth gear to first gear, you know, to oh, like yeah. immediately go, yeah, yeah. you stall, you know, you stall. Yes. You know, like you say, you go numb, like that, it happens. And so it's, I, I think it's important. I know a lot of people, you know, have talked about, I've talked with other people, therapy, and like, oh, therapist, you know. And no, it's, it's, like, it's the best thing. It's wonderful. I'm jealous that you're going once a week. You can do it. <laughs> I, I know I can. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to wrap this up. This has been uh, incredible and like I thought it was going to be. Better, actually. Um, I just want to say to Courtney, working with Breaking the Chains, it's a great organization. And what you do and what I've been doing for 30 years, um, one thing that is important that, that I figured out through a letter that I got once, it was not even a big deal, but somebody said, you know, hearing you talk just makes me feel I'm not alone. Yeah. And that, uh, what we're doing here is, is, is that, and you should continue to do it. You should have your own your own little your podcast or whatever you sh you really should because you have you have something that that needs to be heard i think all right courtney thank you for thank being you here thank you so much it's uh it's been therapy for me me as well and this you been it's great. been like two two therapists all right anyway courtney thank you thank you and that's it all right all right